Hello and welcome to the Talking NorCal podcast, the official podcast of Active NorCal. I am your host, Zach O'Brien. With me here today is our co-host, our producer, for the very last time, it's Francis Jerome O'Brien, the fourth. What's going on, Bob? Happy to be here. So Hi, welcome. Thank you. So we have some sad news. Uh, Bob is, um, he is taking a new job, a new full-time job, and will no longer be the producer of this podcast. We are sad to see you go, Bob. Um, we started this in quarantine, and uh, it's been a blast to do, and it's been fun growing it and everything. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to keep it going. Um, whether you know, I find a new co-host, probably not. I'll probably just do it on my own for now. Uh, but it's it's been a fun run. So today. Uh, we're going to have a cool podcast. We're going to, well, we got to talk about the storm. It is deep December right now. It's all anyone's ever talking about historic storm that we got over Christmas. So we're going to talk about that. We're also doing our top 10 active NorCal articles of 2021, which is going to be a lot of fun. I didn't tell you what, which ones they are. So it's going to be a surprise for you. That's how I wanted it. And then we're going to finish with a little, uh, a little goodbye to Bob talking about Bob's favorite moments working uh, with Active NorCal. Let's jump right in to this podcast with the Tahoe's Helen NorCal. NorCal, we're Helen NorCal, and I could spend all day just chilling in the South Bay. We're NorCal, we're Helen NorCal, and Darren knows how to do to kick it down in Santa Cruz or NorCal. We're Helen NorCal, and we get a little cray cray when we visit the East Bay. We're NorCal, we're Helen NorCal. It is deep December in Northern California. We had historic storms. This has been so much fun to watch. Uh, it was actually funny because I, my wife and I usually go to Park City, Utah for Christmas every year. And you can ask my family there. Uh, I was just on my computer the entire time trying to get updates on the storm. It was just crazy. It, it, out, it, it surpassed its forecast. The snow piled up, walls of snow everywhere. It has been so much fun to watch. Were you watching it? Oh, I guess you were here. You were living it. I was living the rain that was here, which is always good to have. You know, we've been needing rain and precipitation for quite a while. So I was watching all of this happen digitally, sitting in the comfort of my own home, watching movies, Christmas movies, and things like that. Uh, but yeah, electric content, love to see it. Great. I mean, I I feel like I got to go visit the snow now. Yes. Well, you got to wait because traffic is insane, and we'll get to that. Um, yeah, no, it was... It was really fun. I, you know, these these sort of things I really enjoy creating content around because it can be helpful for people. I got a lot of messages about how the updates from the storms helped people maneuver their, you know, their Christmas travel, and that's always great to hear. Um, but you know, just seeing that much snow this early in the season is really fun. So let's go through first and just talk about these snow totals from Northern California. Give them to me. <laughs> so, and we'll get later into the full December totals, which are snow totals for the Sierra, which are historic, but just this storm, it's, it's the seven day storm essentially that we had Uh sugar bowl, got 121 inches, Boreal, 137 inches, Palisades, Tahoe, 113 inches, um, 128 for Homewood and 132 for North star, North star, Got the crown of the storm, but a lot of people online actually think that North Star fibs their numbers, which could be true. But it's still, ten or eleven feet of snow in correct. the last seven days in this these places, and they needed it. Eleven feet at North Star. Well, eleven did, feet on the. Haven't we talked about how they needed like a hundred and eighty inches uh, to like fill up the lake again, or something no, no, no. like that? Eight hundred. Oh, eight hundred. Yeah, yeah. eight hundred inches, and I want to get into that later sure, because. Sure, sure. Uh, because this obviously goes into the larger discussion of the drought and and you know how we get out of the drought and we are certainly on a on a awesome way trajectory. you know start good trajectory whatever tra trajectory yeah, I think we're works. both kind of noodle today I didn't get noodly. I didn't get much sleep last night but um, yes all so South Lake Tahoe also not as much. But they got, let's see, Kirkwood got 83 inches. Heavenly got 78 inches. 
You go down to um, the eastern Sierra. Mammoth got 110 inches. And then the Central Sierra Snow Lab, which is the it's, it's UC Berkeley's laboratory where they study Sierra snow and the, and the if, like they're doing a lot of climate change stuff there. That got 118 inches. So as we speak, it is December 29th. This will probably come out New Year's Eve Day. or something. New Year's Eve, yeah, yeah. New Year's. Um, we are over 200 inches of snow for December, which is the snowiest December in Tahoe's history and the the history of the Sierra Nevada of human history that we've seen that we've been able to measure this stuff. It's the snowiest over 200 inches for December. Um, Mount Rose has 225 inches. Borealis 220 inches. It is massive, massive amounts of snow. So that that 200 inches beat the 1970 record, which was 179, I believe. So we're like three feet over the record. That's it's, insane. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. After having no snow, now it's just like, all right, here it all is. Play catch up. Yes. And, you know, I don't want to get into the whole climate change thing, but this is this is what they say climate change is, right? We go long periods of drought and then just it just dumps. Um, Sw- massive swings. Correct. You want to know what's crazy? There's another massive storm predicted for next week. There we go. Isn't Let's that just nuts? Add to this total. We Isn't need to nuts? fill these reservoirs again. So this obviously it, it the the storm really picked up steam uh, Christmas Day. Christmas Day is when it got crazy and when all the roads closed and the roads closed for essentially three days. You have uh, I eighty that goes over Donner Summit. Closed for three days. It just reopened, I think, either late last night or early this morning. They for had, everyone? Because they were let, yeah. letting locals. So they were letting locals in for a little bit because all the Tahoe locals were out of town. And I heard some people say, like, yeah, I, I've had to buy hotel rooms because I can't get home. So, like, you had to show your ID. And, um, and then they opened it eastbound yesterday. But there were still trees all over the road on I-80 going westbound. They finally cleaned all that up. And and kudos to California Highway Patrol, Caltrans, anybody who, you know, was helping traffic in this storm, which was just a mess. And there's a ton of idiots out there. Um, So Highway 50, Highway 50 opened before Highway 80, right? Over, uh, and Highway 50 was closed for like two and a half days over Echo Summit. That that was the longest traffic I've ever seen in Tahoe, and I have seen huge traffic in Tahoe. Um, I my wife works with someone who said they spent thirteen hours in their car yesterday trying to get back from South Lake. Oh my, thirteen hours! Thirteen in the hours, car. and they probably moved a total of like two two hundred miles at the end of the day. I so and I I wrote an article about this yesterday um, about the traffic. It, my estimate was that it was at least 60 miles of bumper to bumper traffic. And that's probably being uh, conservative in my estimate because like Kingsbury grade that goes over into the Nevada side was, was bumper to bumper South Lake Tahoe from, you know, state line and beyond all the way to essentially like Placerville was bumper to bumper in the snow. People, you know, obviously acting like idiots crashing. You got, you got, you know, um, Trucks jackknifing, all the above. It was crazy. Uh, An avalanche fell on Highway 89 right outside Palisades Tahoe between um, Tahoe City and Truckee. That closed down that road. All the roads were closed. You couldn't... luckily no cars were on the road when the avalanche ha- happened. Well, it's it, there is video and it's on our website of people. They got the avalanche sticks checking to see if anyone's in there. Um, but yeah, no one was under there. Thank goodness it happened at like 6:30 in the morning. So it was just crazy, and, and it does seem now... Oh, and Highway 395 was also closed, and I love it when they do this because to get into Mammoth Lakes, where Mammoth Mountain is, a, a, a legendary ski town, Mammoth Lakes, you have to take Highway 395, and High, Highway 395 was closed for like 60 miles. You couldn't get in or out of Mammoth Lakes, 
And I love it when that happens because it's sort of like this ski island that they live in. It, it happened. Uh, it happens, you know, maybe once or twice a year. But that that was pretty cool to see. Um, so, yeah, just a crazy, crazy traffic nightmare week. Yeah, I mean, it, if it was a nightmare, it's probably because you didn't plan very well. Because this was all we we knew this was coming maybe not to the severity that it happened, but this was all known. So like, you know, Brittany's f- coworker that, that was traveling back from Tahoe, like you knew it was going to snow. You were going there to have an enjoyable time. You didn't think you were going to run into this much snow, right. but you knew what you were getting yourself into. So 13 hours of travel is never fun. Um, it's it's funny. Cause we were supposed to, we were going to drive to park city, right? Which is about a nine, 10 hour drive. But, um, and we would have gotten over the pass just fine, but we would have been stuck in probably Reno for like three days if we hadn't. And, and you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a really good driver in the snow, but uh, you, if it's closed, it's closed. Or if there's traffic, there's traffic. There's nothing you can do. And that would have really sucked. So we ended up buying a, an expensive freaking um, plane ticket. Plane ticket, but... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that were either stranded in like Sacramento or, uh, Reno, just not, you, you just could not travel. And what's funny is Google maps was sending people on these crazy routes, uh, on closed roads. So (laughs) that, and I don't, we shouldn't get too deep on this, but it, it was pretty weird. So if you were say in Sacramento and you wanted to get to Tahoe, Google Maps took you, and Highway 80's closed, and Highway 50's closed. There's no way for a straight shot. Google Maps was taking you all the way up to Yuba City, then to Quincy, and I think to, like, I don't even know which highway, and then these back roads, and those back roads were such a shit show. There were trees everywhere. Everyone was, uh, you know, crashing, and, you know, the CHP finally came out and said, guys, like, we're not going to save you if you die. Don't come to Tahoe. Don't Don't come come to Tahoe. And, like, uh, there's all these memes about Teslas, you know, stuck everywhere because all the Bay Area people, you know. So. That's funny. I didn't see those. Yeah. Yeah. So Google Maps and, and Google actually made a statement saying, like, you know, there's only so much we can do in storms like this, you know. The it, algorithm redirects you. Like, right. we, we don't know, like, to just say don't come. Like, we don't have a notification Google, on, <laughs> right. on Google Maps that says, nope, <laughs> just nope. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so just absolutely insane. Um, also during this storm, I, I the day after Christmas and so the the twenty sixth and the twenty seventh, I think twenty seventh specifically, um, all Tahoe ski resorts closed. And on which day? Day after Christmas? No, the twenty seventh. I believe Two most days. of them were closed on the twenty sixth, but I think that maybe one or two opened. The twenty seventh, every single ski resort was closed. Why? Which, which, because... Too much snow? Too much snow. And transportation was unsafe? Well, transportation, like, who was really going to be there, right? right? Um, they they could not dig out their lifts in time. The wind was crazy. It was like, it, there was no visibility. Um, and the, I saw some discussions on Twitter with some Tahoe locals. Is that the first time that ever happened? I mean... Usually in big storms like this, there's one or two, maybe one of those small ski resorts that finds a way to open just for like a few locals who can get those epic powder runs. Right. All the ski resorts were closed. To the public. You got to remember that there's however many employees at all of these places. The the ones that are able to actually come, they probably rode the shit out of those places, you know? Yeah. On an epic day because... Two days after Christmas is a very popular day to go ski snowboard because A, people just got new equipment for Christmas, and B, there's usually people not working during that time, the time between Christmas and New Year's. So right. what an epic time to have the the mountain to yourself. But it sounds like no one really did. Well, it's funny because I talked to two of my friends last night that have season passes uh, to North Star, and they were blacked out this entire week, and North Star was closed, so it doesn't matter, you know? They actually lucked out. Um, What do you mean they were blacked out? So they have you buy a certain pass. Oh, like there's like blackout dates, which is like Christmas or New Year's or you know the the uh, holidays where a lot of people come from like the Bay Area. So they have like different passes where some 
Yeah, yeah. You, some days, some days it's like... You it, can pay more for no blackouts. Um, but most people just, cause those blackout dates are super crowded anyway. So it's anyway. just like, so just point. take the, um, you probably, you know, definitely Christmas, definitely New Year's. I don't know what other dates they have, uh, that are blacked out, but I, I used to do the same thing. I would just say, yeah, I, I'll take those blackouts for like a hundred bucks cheaper or whatever. Um, Grass Valley was an absolute mess. Grass Valley, there were trees down everywhere power was out for some people for like three days uh well they just got hit with fire and so like that area has been ravaged by both ends of the weather spectrum i i was thinking about this yesterday what happens when a fire a recently burned area is covered in you know 10 feet of snow you look at Sierra, Sierra at Tahoe, which is closed, and I was having a discussion with my friend. I don't think they will open this year. I mean, I, I if they do, it's going to be very like one little run just to sort of say victory we opened. But what happens? I also saw this guy who skied through the burn zone of Lassen Volcanic National Park yesterday or two days ago. So it's kind of crazy. We are seeing extremes, you know, on both ends. And I I don't, is this, this seems unprecedented to me. Like we don't have um, anything to uh, say what happens when these, these significantly extreme burned areas are now covered in 10 feet of snow. Well, when it rains, it's flooding, you right. know, and mudslides, but snow, we haven't seen this yet. So it's kind of too, we'll see what's to come. I would have to think. That snow is better than rain, right? But eventually it's going to become liquid, so what's going to happen? Right, yeah. And it, to me, a lot of those areas are hilly areas. Are we going to see avalanches in those areas? Because there's not, like, trees to kind of hold them back, if you will. I don't know. That just jumped in my head. No, I, trees, well, I guess you could be right. Uh, yeah, you're probably you right. You also think about, you know, a tree will at some point kind of all of the snow will kind of fall off of it of, uh, in at the same time and that potentially could cause avalanche. I don't know. Yeah. No, there were avalanches. And avalanche, you know, it, they it's extreme avalanche danger up there right now. So, and I, I can't imagine anyone that is doesn't know what they're doing is up there. Um, and anyone that's going, like, backcountry skiing right now uh, should be – you know, acutely aware that their life is in danger and that's what they're doing out there. Uh, speaking of that uh, terrible story of the skier who was lost on Christmas Day um, at North Star, you know, they're still looking for him. He he scan his t he told friends that he was going skiing at North Star on Christmas Day. His ticket was scanned at like eleven o'clock, and no one's seen him since. His car was in the parking lot, so unfortunately, this is just this what this is what happens when this much snow falls. We saw it in 2019 with those historic storms; multiple people died, and it, typically, it's from them falling in tr tree wells. Um, his name was Rory Angelata, 43 years old, Truckee local, uh, a experienced skier. And um, it really sad. They're still looking for him. They have been looking round the clock, 24-7. Uh, you know, the search and rescue team is posting these videos online of them, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning. They're still looking. And you, obviously, since then, it has snowed an extra, like, 7 feet of snow. So, um, not looking good. Yeah. Uh, condolences to his family. I, I think the all you can hope for is that he, you know, he bailed or something, you know, and is still alive, but it, it looks like he might, he might have succumbed to some sort of tree. Well, which is typically the case. Um, so anybody, even in, in, in these ski areas, it's avalanches are a danger. Um, uh, but tree wells are super dangerous. Like you think about those big trees and they, it dumps that light snow and you fall 10 feet into a tree. Well, it's almost impossible to get out, you know? So be really careful out there in the trees. And I would say 
the the easiest way to stay away from this issue is to just ski with a friend, ride with a friend. Right. So, um, hopefully, this story turns out with Rory okay, but but you know, most likely it won't. Um, okay, so let's look at the bigger picture here. So, could this deep sember get us out of the drought? No, but it can help. Uh, well, it could. I mean, okay. So, what if uh, first and foremost, this Q four quarter four of twenty twenty one from October to December is all is the snowiest Q four in Sierra's history. So, not only did December break the record. But also the the three month span of October to December, it's the snowiest ever recorded. That's a great start, right? That's a that's a really you important. Couldn't ask for a better start. Correct. But the, you talked about earlier. Can we get to that eight hundred inches? And <laughs> some of these places already have two hundred and twenty, and we're like very beginning of the season. Like I said, there's another big storm coming. Um, I don't have the reservoir numbers in front of me, but they are rising quickly. This, I mean, this could be huge. Well, you said we have another storm ahead of us, but who knows what's going to be beyond the horizon after that, Correct. right? And, and we talk about this every time. Like, appreciate it while it's here because we don't know when it's going to end. We do keep getting it this year, but this is this is outside the norm. We're kind of playing catch up again, but uh, who knows how long this will last. We love it. We love seeing it. We need it. But, yeah, I mean... Just keep it coming and let's hope it continues and we can build those water levels up to where they need to be to be out of drought level again. Yeah, it's it's funny. And, you know, I, again, talk about climate change. We go from these extremes. It was that five, we had the five-year drought in the, the 2010s, you know, where it was this, like Shasta Lake. We could see all the historic stuff like we saw a lot this year, you know, that is usually underwater. It was that low. Um and then 2017 and 2019 hit, and Lake Orville is literally overflowing, and they're evacuating a quarter of a million people because we have too much water. And I wonder, we've talked, we talk a lot about that. Uh, what was it? A rail, uh, uh, the tunnel in Shasta Lake that reveals itself. Yeah, yeah. I wonder where that is right now. You know, with the water, like, how, is it underwater already? If so, that's by a great how question. Much? You know, because that's a really good indicator of where we are drought wise. I saw a picture of it last week and you could still see it, but a lot's happened in a week. Sure. And, and obviously with, with this snow, it takes a while to fill in. Right. 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 Um, but there was rain. I mean, it rained at Shasta Lake, you know, that that's a great question. Um, yeah, but it, I mean, this does look, you know, what, what if we've had like some really extreme drought years, you know, and I, I think when I think about those, I think about fires, you think about 2018, 2019, 2020. And then this past year was the largest fire season we've seen. I mean, th th uh, these storms could be so big for us, like for water, for fire. I mean, we talk about it all the time, but. And re and regrowing that which has been burned in the last few years, right? And helping rebuild those areas right. naturally. Right. Um, but yeah, we talk about that 800 inches, which has never happened. The Sierra has never received 800 inches of snow in a, in a water year. If we're on pace, man. 25% there and we're we only are on a pace. month and a half deep or so. The historic year of uh 2019 uh i believe it's 2019 yeah where all the you know we called it the 500 club back then it was um the tahoe ski resorts all like a most of them had like 500 inches of snow so 800 inches would be the most we saw we've ever seen but we are on pace and that that was the number that we've been talking about that that would like we're out of the drought you know, 800 inches. So love to see it. It's kind of crazy um, to watch, but this is, it was so much fun to have like this white Christmas and to watch this, these walls of snow build. Um, I just watched this time lapse that um, I've been meaning to post on our website of Ta South Lake Tahoe in December. And it just, it's the entire month this person put together this time lapse. And it is so cool. To, it's their backyard and it just grows and grows and sinks a little bit and grows. That's and, awesome. Yeah. So 
fun week. I, I, I had a blast with it. I mean, we're certainly not done. And like I said, it looks like we're going to start the new year out with a uh, another storm. So I'm really excited. Deep December is here. Now let's get Jan you buried. Oh. All right. Well, that's all. I think I think we covered everything in the storm. Um, if if you missed any of it, just go to our Instagram page, which has go, been going nuts lately. Just check out our Instagram page because we got a whole lot of cool videos from the storm and uh, check it out. But now let's let's get some f- finality of 2021. And let's talk about our top 10 articles of the year. So like I said, I have not told Bob any of these. We're going 10 to 1, right? We're going 10 to 1. So here's the deal. We actually, as as the, we're like this active NorCal, I believe, is what, seven years old. And as we build more and more stuff on the website, um, some stuff gets really uh, we're really high on Google, especially the Lemurian stuff. So these articles are, they have to be from 2021 because otherwise, you know, these are the most read articles of 2021 that we wrote in 2021. Because if, if I just did the most read articles of 2021, we'd have the top two would be Lemurian still. It's Which cra- are six years old. Uh, yeah, probably five years old. That is the biggest one. Um, it's still, it, it the cra- it's crazy how big those numbers are on the Lemurian stuff, but I digress. I also, um, I took a couple out of this list, some viral, uh, like weather articles I took out and some fire articles because we actually like those fire and weather stuff. They, they can get crazy viral. So I have some in there, but um, I didn't want the whole list to be fire and weather. But this is, um, these are the top 10 articles from Active NorCal in 2021. At number 10 is something we talked about two weeks ago on this podcast when we were just getting information on it. And I sort of just threw it out on the podcast without knowing that much about it. And we wrote about it and it's already in our top 10 and went crazy. Can you guess what what it is? I want to say it's that big fish that was caught. Giant rainbow trout caught on the Feather River was likely the largest ever caught in California. Wow. Uh, And it's super recent. So that's that. I mean, it hasn't had as much time to grow as some of the others on. Oh, it's yeah. It's probably further up on the list since I since I put this list together. But this is we've talked about this dude. uh, Josh Giordano just pulls massive trout out of the Thermalito Diversion Pool just below Orville Dam on the Feather River. And again, he released that fish. Well, yes. So uh, the. um the fish measured in at 41 inches in lake length and 27 inches in girth, which estimates to be 38.2 pounds, right? The current state record is 27 pounds. So this fish is estimated to have shattered that record by 11 pounds. Crazy. The, the um, fish that broke the record in Lake Natomas in 2005 was 37 and a half inches long and 26 inches in girth. So this fish was significantly, uh, you know, bigger than the, than the, um, previous record record. Uh, so he <laughs> Giordano is crazy. He, he got a 25 and a half pound rainbow getting just shy of the record. in what was that? 2020. And he actually submitted that for the record, and it came a, a pound and a half short. And since then, he said, all right, I'm, I don't want to pull these fish out of this water anymore. I want people to be able to catch it. I want them to whatever. And uh, he then later got a 28.9 pound rainbow that he did not submit for the record. So this guy literally has has like broken the record twice, but he refuses to submit them so he can release it back. We need to figure out a way to submit the records without having to kill the fish. Sure. Totally agree. So, but apparently it's like where he fishes, it's really hard to get to. You have to like seriously bushwhack. And so maybe that's it. Well, maybe that's why it'd be really hard to like bring a, you know, a scale out with him, you know. Uh, But did you see the, the picture of this fish? Hell yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Huge. And... 
so all once we posted it, whatever, a week, two weeks ago, all anyone was saying is that fish is a steelhead. It's not a steelhead. And we know that because there is a dam. The, d- the difference between a rainbow and a steelhead is a rainbow stays where they're, you know, it stays in their fresh water and a steelhead goes out into the ocean and comes back to spawn, right? Just like a salmon. A salmon. So that's the only, they are the same genetics, but a steelhead goes out in the ocean and a rainbow stays. It's impossible for these rainbows to go out to the ocean because there's a dam. And the, the reason why they get so big is because it, this dam has sort of created this great feeding frenzy for them. So it's, And if it's so hard to get into, there's not a lot of fishermen. They're kind of at the top of the, of the food scale yeah. in the water when you have a bear come. That changes it a little bit. But, yeah, it just is an optimal opportunity for them to thrive. Yes. So, really cool. I You know, this this was recent, so I, I'm still excited about it. This went pretty viral on our website. Um, and, you know, Josh Giordano, what a badass. To th- I mean, would you have it in you to throw that fish back? I don't think I would, right? No. I don't know. I mean, I'm a catch-and-release guy, but, like, right. you're, you're sitting there, you're holding... What, what could be the state record and quite frankly a a huge increase in the current state record so that record could sit for a long time and he said nope I'm just a I'm just a pure fisherman I want this fish in the water he's the lord of the lung absolute badass I uh I'm gonna get that guy it, I, I've had some uh, short conversations with him online and I'm gonna get that guy on the podcast because that guy is a badass do it okay. Coming up next at number nine is a Tahoe story. Does, Are th- does it involve a bear? No. Okay. That's later. There. That's that's later. Good. This is actually. I. I don't. I, I don't know why this went so viral, but uh, are there frozen bodies at the bottom of Lake Tahoe? A, th- a conversation we've had on this podcast many times. So after we did a we did a segment on this podcast about it, I wanted to get that segment on our website. So I just decided to write up sort of the story of the legend of frozen bodies at the dead of Lake Tahoe. I I put it down there. Uh, I put it on the website. I put the video up and um, yeah, it, it did really well. So it makes sense. Mob hits from Tahoe, you know, being taken out into the middle of the lake, dropped off. It's a really cold, really deep lake. It makes sense. Chinese uh, Chinese workers. There's also a lot of rumors that they killed a lot of Chinese workers and dumped them into the lake. This is a this is an article I think that will go viral for years to come, though. Probably you this know? this is um, one thousand percent a like a Google article. Yeah, like we have certain articles that go uh, viral on social media. That's typically um, how. Our, our stuff gets seen, but this is definitely one that's going to get to the top of Google and, and be up there for a and long time. And you can share it year after year because the story isn't really going to change unless they find a body. Which they won't right. because that lake is 1,600 feet deep. It's, They'd have to like, take deep. a submarine down there to get it. The second deepest lake in America. All right, coming in at number eight, we have another Lake Tahoe article involving a bear the one that the bear broke into the house lake tahoe tourist shoots charging bear in vacation rental um yeah a lot of people were really interested in this story there is obviously controversy with bears in tahoe bears are are have gotten really good at breaking into homes and eating human food and um there, there was this guy who was staying at a south lake tahoe like airbnb or some sort of rental and he comes home, the bear charges him, he shoots the bear, uh, and it actually didn't die, remember that? It was like a 500-pound bear, it didn't die, they actually, they found it later and euthanized it, right. so, um, yeah, I guess we don't have to get into no, that. No, I mean, it, 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 what my head jumped to when you said that is that with this new snow, because in my opinion, a lot of, so bears are becoming more at ease with having humans close to them, I guess. But in my opinion, a lot of that is because they don't have a lot of food to eat and they need to go seek food outside. And that's a lot, in my opinion. 
because of the drought situation, you know, with a lot of the burning of, uh, you know, certain territories and, and bushes and trees burning and just the lack of food for these bears that has kind of forced them into more human territory. So I'm thinking maybe hopefully this new snow, this p- precipitation we're getting back will help alleviate a little of that. Well, it's most certainly wildfire driven. These these a lot of bears are driven into human society that we are, do really well protecting from wildfire, but their you know their homes are burned, and so they they come into you know places that are populated and they're looking for food. There's also the issue that um, they get really good at it and they stay there. Right. And they, even if they're, you know, all the trees grow back and their environment is good again, they're like, why would we go there? We, we eat McDonald's every day out of cars, you know? So it is, it, it, there, there's a lot of issues with that. And Tahoe bears are very controversial because there are people who believe you should never kill a bear. You should, you know, but it, there's also like some common sense to saying, well, there may be a three strike policy. If the same bear and all these bears are tagged, if the same bear does it three times, then we euthanize it. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's just a really interesting situation, really interesting controversy. Um, RIP the bear. RIP the bear. Yeah. Sad story. But I, I, we came to the conclusion when that, that article happened that that guy was justified. And so yes. did the California department of, of, um, Fish and Wildlife said that, that this guy's life was in danger. He shot the bear. So, okay. Coming in at number seven, the Redwood Route Rail Bikes might be the most unique adventure in Northern California. So this is all about uh, the skunk train and how the skunk train has these red Redwood Railwood Redwood <laughs> Noodle Brain today. I am new. Redwood Rail Bikes. Um, and they're really cool. You can ride like these two person bikes on the, the, the railway the actual railroad tracks. Yeah. Uh, I did not, I did not read this article. Yeah. This was, when did we post this? Oh, this was January 2nd, 2021. Thing got picked up by someone else just to help the push. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why this went so I didn't, I, big, I don't but remember yeah. even seeing that one. Honestly, it really is one of like the most unique things you can do in Northern California. Now, this was written almost a year ago. All right. What's number six? Number six. You actually mentioned it earlier. Low water levels allow kayakers to paddle through historic train tunnel on Shasta Lake. Uh, we talked about this a bunch. It was the uh, Shasta Railroad train tunnel, which was built in 1884. And um, 60 years later, they built the dam and it went underwater. When drought hits and the lake goes really low, you can and you can kayak through and you have to time it perfectly, right? We talked about this because the water gets to a certain point and you can go through it and then it becomes completely empty. And you can walk through it. And you can walk through it. Um, this, yeah, this, I mean, this was a cool story at the time. It went, we posted a photo of it that went like super viral and um, then, uh, then we wrote this article and... Yeah, it uh, it went pretty crazy. Well, again, I think that the level of which to which you could see this tunnel is a good um, indication of where we are drought wise. And so, I would love to see where this is currently right now. Any listener out there that's close to this, go take a picture of it. What it looks like right now, I would. I'd love to see how full it is. I'm sure. I don't think it's probably covered yet with water, right? But I'll bet you it's. It sick. wasn't last week. It was not last week. And to your point, I think just being able to see this train tunnel, we're in a drought. Right. You know? Right. But uh, I bet you with all of the snow that we've received, once it's springtime and all of that snow melts, I guarantee it'll be covered. It will be covered. It's it's always underwater in the winter or like later in the winter, spring. You know, it's, it's low, you right. know? I mean, the lake has to be really low. Um, but, but, you know, this was kind of a big deal for, especially for people that live in like Redding kayakers that live in Redding, they all like flock to the, to that area when they could go through it. It's really cool. Like aesthetics going through a, a, what is it? Um, 150 year old tunnel or whatever. So 
Yes, that was fun. That was from the summer, August 2021. Up next, what number are we on here? Five. We are on five. So I'm now realizing there is a lot of uh, Tahoe stuff on this. Our, our, Tahoe's a popular place. I think a lot of people from like different areas are, are started following us, and they are really interested in Tahoe. But this was huge news, and I remember writing about this when I was in uh, COVID quarantine. Webcam footage shows... The Calder Fire burning through Sierra at Tahoe. This was the night of August 29th. And like I said, I was in um, COVID quarantine. I had, I was actually sick, I remember. And the Calder Fire was like approaching Sierra at Tahoe. And I was, I was just searching through all the different webcams of the El Dorado National Forest and the ski park. And finally, I found the fire. And sure enough, it was right next to... The ski resort. So this is kind of when everyone realized, oh, shit, Sierra is about to burn. It's a massive fire. And we were anticipating it being maybe the worst potential fire years in recent history because of the drought situation. We had found ourselves. And then quickly, at, what was it, a month after that, that we really started to It was, what, October that we received the big rain? Yep. And so what, two months after that, I guess, that everything was kind of put out and we've moved on with fire season. But that was a really scary moment where we were like, look, this is just an indication of how bad it's going to get. Right. Yeah, that was... I think looking back on... I mean, I was pretty... I was pretty devastated when it happened and, and looking back on it, I think we escaped that fire, um, you know, decently for one, it didn't get into South Lake Tahoe, which was a huge scare. I mean, some of those people were evacuated for a week or two up to two weeks. I think for some people, obviously some cabins burned over, you know, near echo summit and a lot burned, um, like grizzly flats and everything. Uh, and we've talked about it. There, there's now the father son duo who have been arrested for starting that fire. We're still trying to follow what the hell's going on with that story. But, um, yeah, I remember when this happened at the time and it was, it was really hard to watch a place that I love a place that I grew up, um, snowboarding at, you know, I had a, I had a pass there my entire college six years at college. Yes. I spent six years at college. Um, I love that place. And so it, it's been hard to watch and, and I'm glad that more damage wasn't done, but that was, I mean, that was the viral. They put their snow blowers at the main lodge to make sure it didn't burn down, which is just another unprecedented thing. I mean, so, uh, yeah, that was a really crazy night. I remember texting all my snowboarding buddies and saying, well, say goodbye to Sierra at Tahoe, you know. So, uh, yes, that came in at number five. Number four, we have another Tahoe article. Shocker. And I think this is the last one. Yes, this is the last one. How a tech billionaire lost $128 million buying a Lake Tahoe vacation home. You remember this? I do remember this. And what's crazy is, for some reason, I keep stumbling upon YouTube videos that are like, let's tour this $45 million mansion in Tahoe. And I click on it, even though it's like a 45-minute video. I get all of those on YouTube. That's funny. Uh, it it might have. So you and I obviously have both have access to the Talking NorCal YouTube page, and mm-hmm. I think that might have been what did it was – I saw you saw one, and then oh, I saw yeah. one, and so that's kind of how. But um, I've watched three or four, maybe five, six since we talked about this on the podcast. Uh, I absolutely remember this article. Yeah, so I cannot pronounce this guy's name, even though I'm actually I I he's got a podcast that's actually really good. It's Chameth Palapatia. Anyway, he's a venture capitalist, minority owner of the Golden State Warriors. Um, he made a, you know, billions of dollars off investments and in, like Facebook and Slack, and he's a really rich guy. Uh, he purchased a Truckee vacation home in 2014 for 2,739 Bitcoin. Back then, it was worth 1.6 million. Today, well, today, I February 18th, 2021, that those Bitcoin would be 129 million. So that's how he lost it, and of course, he didn't actually lose it. But it's just, it was... He just didn't gain the Bitcoin value. Correct. If he would have just um, 
bought it for cash, it would have been a lot better. It's classic tale of Bay Area, you know, money being completely ridiculous. And this guy, you know, it's just a drop in the bucket for him, which sucks. Well, the previous the owner made out crazy good. Yeah, that's true. I wonder if that person kept the Bitcoin. And this was if you're that rich, you don't need to, but it would just help. You know, a quick hundred million dollar gain is is good for everybody. Yes. And this was, I think th- this was when Bitcoin peaked at whatever it was, like 60,000 and uh, per coin, you know. So 2,739 Bitcoin. That's cool. I want to sell something for Bitcoin. Like I see a lot of, I like see a lot of like athletes. Merch, like I, Active Norkel merch. Yeah. I see a lot of athletes um, uh, getting their salaries in Bitcoin now. Um, it's a risk though, you know? And so, I mean, it's becoming less and less of a risk the older it gets and the more people are accepting Bitcoin, but um, it's not a value that is as consistent as say like gold or the dollar. Right. I, I mean, I think, well, we shouldn't get dive in deep into a Bitcoin. I'm not discussion. A, a financial investor. <laughs> I'm not a financial this expert. Is, this Do is not a, listen to anything. This is not financial say. advice, but listen yeah, to literally hedge at whatever i say i am the worst at it no i i think bitcoin is i if you get it it, it's it's certainly not gonna lose all its value you know what i mean and if you get it at somewhat of a low number i think you're pretty good but by the way uh i think it was zillow recently posted that south lake tahoe is the hottest real estate market in the entire country did you hear not to get too political, but did you hear about what happened with Zillow and like the yeah. controversy behind that? Yeah, they yeah, they they really screwed up. Yeah. Um weren't they weren't they buying homes and trying to flip them? They were but they were pro- losing money on said homes because they were buying into like the highest market possible. But they were basically they are they were purchasing so many that they kind of dictated where the market was and so they could really move the market in their advantage and it was kind of almost a monopoly and it was unethical and they knew they were doing it and it it, it was obvious to the people that were paying attention and so once that became clear they started to sell off all those properties oh interesting so i was hoping that in some of the areas that i'm looking to purchase a home maybe i could find a a pretty sweet deal on one of those (laughs) but apparently not um but yeah i i yeah i think this story specifically, it was just the headline. Like, how the hell could someone lose $128 million on a house when homes, uh, you know, the peak price, the most expensive house in Tahoe is $70 million, which is sick, by the way. We That's have it? it on our website. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, it was $70 million. You're right. It's more now, for sure. It's more. Because that was like $70 million, like two years ago. And I don't know if anyone bought that place, but, you know, all these these billionaires came in, you know, Zuckerberg's got a, a whole block in, um, on the Northwest shore. So anyway, I think that was like, it was just a sexy title and that's why it, it does it did say really well. 75 million is the most expensive mansion. Oh, now I, I, mean, I can't believe that hasn't gone up has. though. Cause maybe it was just an exuberant price to begin with, but yeah, really nice homes in South Lake or just in Tahoe in general. Beautiful place. Yep. All right. Up next, number two, we actually have another drought Shasta Lake article. And this this is kind of cheating because this article was written in our print um, in our print issue. And then of, you wrote it digitally and shared it to the website. So it's technically old article, but it is a it is a 2015 article from our print magazine. And when we were going through a similar drought, which article, which magazine? Was not one of none of these issues. No, uh, and this was a story about someone you know, uh, Mr. Chris Nelson. Yes, sir. Chris Nelson, who uh, we both grew up with. He's a you know he's a outdoor adventurer in Reading. He's a dentist. Chris uh, Nelson I, DDS. I used to play hockey with him. Uh, so did you. Um, he went out and got photos of this that train tunnel um here i'll show you the photo here no, i remember them yeah, yeah 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 that and uh so all when when the that structure was um this year when it was re-emerging out of the water i said you know what we actually don't have that article digitally 
Let me. I re. I. I busted out our old print, <laughs> our old print uh, magazine, and I rewrote it on our website, and it went major viral because people are like, "Oh, is this?" I don't know why they did, but it's a cool story. Chris uh, entered this contest for like an outdoor photo, and he took his. Uh, he put up a. Um, like a seat, uh, hammock, a hammock. Sorry. I'm noodle brain. Uh, he put up a hammock across that over the water and took an awesome picture and won the contest. There you go. Yeah. So that's it. That's all I got. It's an old article, but, uh, thanks to Chris Nelson for helping us out with that article in six years, almost seven years ago. Go, uh, go update that photo and see where we are with the drought. What do you mean? Update it. Go take a picture of it now. I want to see where the water level is. I'm sure you can find it. I told you I saw it like last week. You're really interested in that, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's ended up twice in our top 10. I mean, obviously, I'm not the only one. <laughs> okay. Coming up at number two is something we talked about pretty significantly on this podcast. An, a nice man named Lowell Johnson who made a trip into a fun place. Do you know what I'm talking about? Nope. Coming in at number two, man claims to have recently visited oh, yeah. with Lemurians inside Mount Shasta. Of course, Lemurians had to make this list, even though, like I said, if we actually did like the most popular articles on our website uh, in 2021, like the top five would be Lemurian stuff. But um, Lowell Johnson, he wrote this like blog post about how in the summer of 2020, he went up into Mount Shasta and he went up onto the mountain and um, ended up in Telos, the Lemurian city. And he goes into massive detail about uh, everything he saw. And then at the he end, he had a guided tour. He got a guided tour from some guy with. I want to say his name was Alex. <laughs> it was Alex. Yeah, nice. Uh, and, you know, there's, like, a white period in the middle, and there's, like, crystals everywhere, and they had all these, like, you know, levels, and they had manufacturing and schooling and, um, yeah, they, animals and, it, yeah, weird, weird stuff. I'm going to have this guy on the podcast because we've actually, we've communicated, and I just don't know how to do, I want to be very respectful. Respectful. Right. No, I totally agree. I think that this guy being on the pod would be electric, but you got to do it in an appropriate way. You got to be prepared and not uh, talk down. I think that, I mean, if this guy has more proof than anyone, as far as the existence of Lemurians, we got to hear him out. Yes. And I, I, I honestly, I personally do not believe that there is a, a um, city of, weird humanoids in Mount Shasta. That's my personal belief, but it is a really cool story. This could be an awesome like movie or like Netflix show. You know, I, I, I just Spielberg. I, yeah, I Very just think ETS. I think it's like a really cool story, whether it's real or not. That's not, I don't know, you know, but uh, anyway, I, I just love this Lemurian stuff, as you know, as anyone that listens to this podcast knows. So, and obviously, a lot of other people like it as well, because this was the number two most popular article written on Active NorCal this year. If you have him on the pod next year, maybe that'll be the number one most popular article. I think it would be our most popular podcast for sure. Yeah. Well, and you turn it into an article and get the clicks from that as well. I do. If, if I'm... Uh, if I'm doing it, I want to go and have it in person with him. You know, maybe at Mount Shasta. I, he doesn't live there, but um, I would like to, you know, sit down. I don't want it to be over Zoom because right. I think that that would be our most popular podcast. Okay. Number one, our number one most read article of 2021 is a, it's a weather article from October 22nd, 2021. Do you know what it is? October. It was oh the the uh that Sacramento surpassed the rain totals. Nope. nope. Then I don't. Well, that was part of the larger narrative, but storm approaching Northern California has been classified as a bomb cyclone. Here's what that means. Uh, it's funny. So yeah, we had that another historic storm at the end of October, which is why we um are now dealing with the 
most precipitation in Q4 in like kind of Northern California's history because we had this category five atmospheric river that came through at the end of October. It dumped on the Sierras. It dumped, you know, rain for multiple days, but it was funny because um, I wrote this. I, I think I was one of the first people to really like get into this bomb cyclone stuff, this quote unquote bomb cyclone. And I was listening to, I was watching football and watching uh, the Manning cast. Yeah. 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 And they mentioned it. They're like, there's some sort of bomb cyclone going on in Northern California. And I was like, that yes. was during the 49er game that there was like yeah. a ton of rain. Uh huh. Right. And I was like, I wonder, I wonder if uh, Peyton Manning was reading my article. Nonetheless, uh, you probably, you remember brought, you know, it brought like five feet of snow to the Sierra. It was an atmospheric river that lasted for, you know, 24 days. But this bomb cyclone basically has to do with the pressure of the system. And, um, there is, there's some, there's some, oh, bombogenesis is the popular term used by meteorologists. And yeah, it's just all about pressure and that's how storms get big. I like the atmospheric river better. I like that. That, that name. designation a little yeah. bit better. Again, this is any lesson for anybody that writes out there. Uh, this was just a sexy title, I think. Yeah. And it just went super viral. Bomb cyclone. And we get into sort of the science behind a bombogenesis, you know, storm with hurricane force winds and low pressure and all that sort of stuff. So that's it. That's our top 10 articles of 2021. Which was your favorite? Which was, I, I guess I'd say the Lemurian one. Me too. I, mean, like, <laughs> Me too. I remembered the Lemurian's name. So like, that, yeah. clearly I, I've I, thought a lot about Lowell Johnson over the past year. I have to say, uh, yeah, we're going to get him out on this on this podcast, but just a just an awesome story. And by the way, I want to say that we you know, we clip out these clips for our YouTube for the Active NorCal YouTube page. You can watch the whole episode on Talking NorCal and then we clip it out. I think that's like our most popular clip of the year that we did from the podcast. So Just talking about him? Yeah, well, cuz we I think we did like 12 minutes on that specific story and i uh because there's so many people on like youtube and online searching for lemurians and no one else is doing this content you know so we are the Give Lemurian the people, people what they want yeah i i yeah so that does it top 10 Busy year good year for active norcal it was it was uh, uh 2022 is gonna crush we're gonna and i'm sorry that you're not gonna be here it's okay well you're going to come back on the podcast a bunch and I'm sure I'll help out and uh, I'm sure this won't be the last time you guys see me. I mean, yeah, we, we built this together and I still live in Sacramento, although that's probably not going to last for too much longer. You know, I'm sure this won't be the last time the audience sees me. Yes. So Bob is leaving. Bob has been working uh, for Active NorCal for how long now? I don't know. On and off. So, so on and off times. since the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I mean, pretty consistently over the we last started like, the four years, five years. So I remember it was like March 14th of 2020. I was kind of told by my normal job, all right, it's COVID. And so, you know, just like everyone else, I thought, all right, two weeks off. You know, here we are right. almost two years later. Yeah. But uh, that's when I was like, all right, we need to start making more videos. And you're like, I want to do a podcast. So we did a ton of video content in 2020. And then we started the podcast as well. We've done, what, 50 episodes probably of, of Talking NorCal or close to it. It's got to be right around uh, 50. Yeah, you're probably right. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean. But we, we've been we've been making, I mean, you've been working with Active NorCal making videos for, what, four years maybe? Five years? Probably, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so just to cap off this episode, I want to go through – and you probably didn't write anything down, and neither did I. Our top three moments, our top three Bob moments in Active NorCal's his short and uh, legendary history here. Uh, you want to go first, or should I? You go first. <laughs> okay, so this is probably my favorite. I'll just start with my favorite. My favorite was uh, our five waterfalls in a day 
And uh, we did it for our friends at Discover Siskiyou. It was the first video, I think, that we ever shot together. So this is Bob moments, not just talk NorCal moments? Yeah, Bob active got NorCal it. moments. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Luckily, I didn't make a list. I d- <laughs> I do have a, I do have one talking NorCal moment, which will probably be yours as well. But yeah, so we, I don't even know when this was, 2017 maybe. Uh, we went up to Dunsmere. We did five waterfalls in a day for our friends at Discover Siskiyou. And we did all three of the McLeod Falls. We did Hedge Creek Falls. And then we did Mossbray Falls. There was snow on the ground. So we're the only people out at Mo- McLeod Falls. It was just a blast. We just had a blast. We had that entire park to ourself well that was the time that we got that we had to hike in we had to hike in because the the we, we took bob's mercedes up there and uh you obviously aren't gonna get through the snow it, it was like there was a good foot and a half of snow so we hiked in we hiked all three tiers of mcleod falls and it was a gorgeous day i mean it had just snowed there's there's it's not it was kind of cloudy i remember um uh, but that was just a fun day we did all four five in that day and then we went into dunsmere and like went to that bar and i think we got a pizza and that was just a good day it was a long day it was a lot yeah. of hiking a lot of filming but yeah no that was that was an incredible day yeah yeah so that's my mind what do you got uh all right uh bob moments um i mean i i can think about when I the first thing that came to my head when you said this was a talking workout moment but it wasn't kind of so our, I don't know, first, second episode, we did an in-person interview with Ryan Spitz. Oh, right, Now, yeah. this is not something that any of the audience knows, but this is just what jumped into my head, so I'm just going to go with it. Okay. You were sitting, I'm, I'm behind the camera, I'm listening to the audio of you and Ryan Spitz interviewing at Turtle Bay. In the background, there's a Sundial Bridge, Sacramento River, beautiful, beautiful landscape. But there was this seven-year-old kid oh, that that's just tra- tra- <laughs> kept trying to get in the shot. I don't have I love kids, but I just wanted to throw this kid in, into the river more than anything in the entire world. His parent or who, whoever's watching this child at the moment is seeing this kid come into my shot very clearly and is purposefully doing so. What am I? And so it just a professional me. video shoot. We had two of our professional cameras. Bob's behind both of them, working both headphones on, like yeah. clearly good production. And this kid is trying to ruin it at all costs. I'm t- I, I feel myself turning red, wanting to just tell this kid to go F himself or, and <laughs> throw all him into the, the sacrament parental of parental guardians around him. Like, hello, do you not see what's going on around? That wasn't a positive moment, but for some reason, it's funny to look at back when on. you think, when I think about when you brought up top Bob moments, that was one for me because I was so frustrated and there was nothing I could do. It, the only thing I could do is on film, go and make this kid. Like tell, look like the <laughs> asshole, look like the old man, get off my lawn, yeah. you know? And so there's no reason for me to have think, thought that, but that's what jumped into my head. So I just thought I'd gotcha. mention that one. All right. Next for me, um, I will go with uh, the, <laughs> our little bar crawl in Redding, top Bob moment. So we did, <laughs> we did four breweries in Redding for our friends that visit Redding and, um, we, due to scheduling, we had to do it in the morning, right? So we we go to Woody's at when the, right when they open, which was like ten or eleven, and but during it was like a Tuesday. It was like a Tuesday, yeah. yeah. And so usually I'm like in front of the camera a bunch, but since it was it was beer and Bob's like the food wine guy, I was like Bob, you do this one, um, and. So we get the we go to Woody's. I think we get one beer for you, right? Then we go to Final Draft. And Final Draft, Bob is talking to like the owner and like just chopping it up and having a great conversation. This guy keeps handing you beer and handing you beer and handing you beer. It's eleven in the morning. We're trying to shoot a video, and you're like, you can't say no to this guy, right? And so then we end up going to we went to Cedar Crest, which is just across the street, and I think we had one. And then we went all the way across town to Final. Uh, to fall river and Bob it's, it's like noon and Bob is like six beers deep. And he was like, I'm sick, dude. I can't finish this video. I was so full that like it, f- the last shot was me like taking a sip of beer and talking about it at fall river. And 
it took everything I had to not vomit because I was so full. <laughs> it wasn't because the beer was bad. It's because I had eaten breakfast because I needed a base, but then had been drinking beer consistently since like 10 o'clock in the morning. Very quickly, I'm drunk. And so it was a bit of a, a scene to get the last shot at the last bar, which is fully, I guess it's fully my fault. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, that definitely didn't enter in my head of top Bob moments, but you're right, it, it was. Well, what's funny is so earlier, whatever, probably a couple months prior to that, we did a uh, Discover Siskiyou video doing their beer trail, right? Where I was in front of the camera and I drank at four different breweries. And I drove. And, and I had a blast. Right, right, and, right. I, and like I was because we started at like a decent time in the day and and so forth and so on. And then we ended the day. We got like a big meal and I had a blast because you were driving around. You were behind the camera. I was just drinking a beer. So that's why I was like, hey, Bob, you do this one. I'll drive, you know, I'll, I'll do the camera stuff. And it couldn't have turned out worse for you. And that's and I why was I, excited. I just couldn't, I, I couldn't handle it that day. I don't drink a lot of super heavy IPAs normally. Yeah. And so thinking that I could do them back to back was, uh, uh, yeah, shouldn't have done that. All right. You got another one? Sure. You don't have to. No, no, I got no. one more. I mean, we got the one that we both probably will talk about, but um, I don't know. So... Going on the the video shoots with you was a blast. I think, and I said, I mentioned this one last week, uh, Railroad Park Resort. Yeah. That just whole, it was like a vacation that we filmed and had just an absolute blast. Uh, because we got to do an active NorCal video. We got to do an eating NorCal video. Right. We stayed there for the night. We got a great dinner, great drinks. So, and then I think like the next day we went to like Yaks on the Five and like had breakfast or whatever and and like so i just have such positive memories of that particular trip that that's that's definitely what i'd like to remember. yeah we i remember we finished filming in that cool little restaurant uh and we were just like drinking martinis and you know we probably we probably like drank too much and like went back into our railroad car and like passed out well, but remember that was, I was like chalking so much it up fun. with the chef and yeah. like he brought me back into the kitchen yeah that's and, right yeah it was by the way, I mean, the, just overall, those eating NorCal videos were super fun. Uh, like Grand Zella's uh, was really good. Yaks. Yaks. The, Yaks the OG. Was, Yaks was the first one we did. I remember that got like a shitload of views, too. Yeah, like like 25,000 views. No, like more than that, like 60, I think. Um, so anyway, that I loved all those. But my final one, and it's probably going to be your final one, too, is uh, a talking NorCal moment where Bob creates the most ridiculous sounds to try to get us out of the drought, which single-handedly brought us deep December. Bob, play something. We're only happy when it rains because we really need the rain in NorCal. Yeah, no, this was obviously going to be a, a top moment for both so of us. So funny. It's because I didn't tell you about it. The surprise was the best part was that you had no idea that I'd created like five songs uh, at home just sitting in quarantine and uh, produced them quite well, uh, if I do say so myself, and uh, uploaded them to our podcast producing machine and just played them live for you. And uh, I thought that was a great moment as well. It was so funny at the time because you're like, oh, I got this thing I want to do. I'm like, uh, you're not like, I don't like surprises, you know? <laughs> and you're like, and at first I'm like so skeptical. I'm like, what's Bob going to do? And then you come out with those songs and I'm like, oh my God, that is so funny. Rain dance. And it worked. It worked. And for the first time in like three years, we've had like significant, significant precipitation because we've been playing those for the last three months, play another one. I hate that one. Better grab your this umbrella. I'll make it rain. I'll, I'll make, make it rain. I'll make it rain in NorCal. Yeah. So we never did the music video, but uh, maybe I, someday. I've also kept thinking about songs that I could do this to. And one recently uh, for the Christmas season, you know, we have I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. I was going to say we're dreaming of a wet Christmas, which is exactly what I got. But the majority of the or you could do areas, we're dreaming of a white NorCal. Or wet NorCal. There's kind of some... I don't know. That sounds weird to me. Whatever. Well, sure. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, that was obviously fun for both of us. It was fun for me to create them, to get excited about be, sharing it as a secret. And they're now going to be a part of the podcast forever. Yes. The, those will stay right there because I, don't, I wouldn't even know how to change them if I tried. Um, so there it is. Top Bob moments. Um, 
It's been a blast. Well, I'm sure we'll have you on here uh, frequently, but uh, we'll miss you. And uh, I'm sure our audience will miss you. You got anything I'll to say? I'll miss doing this, honestly. Yeah. Like, I don't want to stop doing this. I just don't want, I want to give this new job my all, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So, no. like, I, I, here's the deal. I can't promise I'll do more, but I'm going to do more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We will, we'll, we'll find ways to sneak you into our stuff. Like, I like doing this. Like, this is not something that is, like, like, I wake up in the morning on days that we're doing this, and, you know, we record in the morning, and we I edit in the afternoon, and I don't dread those days at all, you know? It's not a job that I hate doing, so... Well, I'm dreading have to, yeah. <laughs> having to, uh, what, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I actually, my favorite podcast is just interviews and the, the, it'll be multiple, like he'll, he'll do multiple interviews on each episode. So he covers a variety of topics Who's and I he? like you, you know, I like Bill Simmons. Right. I like the Bill Simmons podcast and he covers all sorts of pop culture and tech, but mostly sports. And that way you know, if if there's a topic that interests me, I can fast forward to that if I don't want to listen to a certain. And that's kind of what I want to do. I want to talk to multiple people per episode. It's just a lot of it's a lot of work to book people to set up timing. Um, so we'll, we're going to I'm going to see how it works and we'll probably end up getting a new producer to so I don't have to do all that editing that I know takes a lot of time. So um but it, it, you're right. The fun part is just sitting here and chopping it up with you. So yeah, you we'll told see me how today it was going to be a short episode, and we're not. This isn't hasn't been short. It's not far. our longest, but yes. Yeah, it's, we don't have an interview, but it's it's easily going to touch the same length as one that we have gonna, full interviews. Let's just say it's gonna. Your last podcast is going to take you a long time to edit. Whatever. Yeah. Well, it's been fun. Thank you for everything, Bob. Thank and, you, and thank you to everyone who listened to this podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We're everywhere. Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, all of the above. You can also follow us on social media, Talking NorCal and Active NorCal on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're all over the place. Um, we're, we will be back sometime in January with uh, a, a different uh, setup for our podcast, but we will still be doing this. Everyone, say goodbye to Bob. Love you guys. And remember, stay active. NorCal, we're hella NorCal. And I could spend all day just chilling in the South Bay. We're NorCal, we're hella NorCal. And Darren knows how to do to kick it down in Santa Cruz. We're NorCal, we're hella NorCal. And we get a little cray cray when we visit the East Bay. We're NorCal, we're hella NorCal. And we get a little mental when we visit Sacramento. Yeah, we're NorCal, we're hella NorCal. And we punch out in Nature's County when we visit Humboldt County. Yeah, we're NorCal, we're hella NorCal. Sebastopol, we're NorCal, we're hella NorCal And you know that we gotta go 